<laughs> let's begin with this so the title is an Intro introduction to hydrologic and hydraulic model with an application of this particular hydraulic model we are not going to see the application of hydrologic but we are going to see hydraulic application right so let's start so these are some of the outline now you can see three different images right in these three images you can see a watershed right a reservoir as well as the channels right three items are there over a particular earth surface right and you know what are the application of these three items you know when rain falls okay after meeting all type of losses and uh, after that runoff happens and that runoff reaches to the stream and through a stream the water is carried to the main rivers and through main rivers it travels towards the sea okay bay of bengal and one river is traveling toward the uh, western side that is your uh, narmada right so like this a particular system is there hydraulic system is there, hydrologic system is there right so what are the uses application of this uh, reservoir watershed why i put these three images here watershed reservoir as well as the channels so you know what is watershed i hope uh, you belongs to which field i want to know IT. from some people it so it's okay in it also you can apply these techniques to you being the model developer right so watershed basically these, these are very general thing everyone knows okay watershed then reservoir reservoir is created for what purpose to store water okay because there are many rivers in our country and we have to fulfill the requirements among the industrial requirement domestic requirement and many requirement we have to fulfill water requirement so for that we are creating dams that means we are trapping the water which is flowing away from one location to other okay so how much water you can store in a reservoir that is the first question right how much water so you know if there comes the importance of the watershed right you know watershed have you heard this term water watershed river or a particular stream is having its own watershed right watershed means the boundary the catch area when rain falls what is going to happen water is absorbed by the surface right and after meeting uh, this when the capacity is over what is going to happen surface runoff starts and i hope you have seen when rain is occurring you can see the water flowing over the surface as per the topography of that area that is nothing but the runoff but it depends upon many things right so that runoff travels as per the topography towards the low lying areas right and then traveling towards the stream and through a stream it joins the river and then main river major river and then towards the whatever be the direction of the river it travels so how much water you are going to store you can see here this is a, an example of a watershed right and it contains a boundary you can see the boundary right i hope the boundary is visible to you yes. and within this this may be our study area we are interested at this particular location right to create a dam right to create a structure which is going to store water so this is the location suppose this is the outlet so you can see number of tributaries are there river is there okay adjoining the streams then main river and then it travels towards this location so this boundary how, how we have got this particular boundary this boundary is nothing but your watershed boundary actually when rain falls over this particular area right so whatever water which is coming through rain and then it moves as per the slope right so it travels toward these tributaries okay and then rivers so this is nothing but the divide line the most highest elevation it contains the most highest elevation so if i give an example because you are from it uh, can i have a register or some copy 
so that I will tell you what exactly this, how to get this uh, boundary. Just give me a copy, a register or a notebook, anything. From this, you will understand very easily what is going to happen. Now, just see. I hope online people are also also visualizing. This is suppose a surface. Okay, it is a surface. Now apply water through this. Okay, from the this particular level, spray water. What is going to happen? Some water will move down toward this direction. Some water will move toward this direction. It's very simple. So this line become the ridge line and this ridge line is nothing but the watershed line okay there may be number of watersheds so this is moving the water which falls over this surface this side it traveled toward this side this side and then meets the river stream water okay so like this you can have the idea key what is watershed right we are not going to create a watershed right now okay but this is how this thing so the most important thing is what the elevation at what level these lines are okay so every river is having its own watershed okay because uh, for example you are having a karun river flowing nearby raipur then it meets which river shimnath river so karun river is having its own watershed boundary shimnath is also having its own watershed then it meets mahanadi near shivrinara i hope many of you knows so at that location, Shivnath meets Mahanadi River. So this is how a watershed is created. Micro watershed, macro watershed, then basin, river basin, like this, it is categorized as per the area as it enlarges. So to get the information about how much, suppose for example, our location is this one. And we want to create a reservoir for this. So first thing and the foremost thing is to create a watershed boundary, right? There are many tools by which you can create a watershed boundary. Okay, with simple two three clicks, you can have this information. But you need a data set, right? What type of data set is required? So we are using either you can go in the field and survey and create a topography. Actually, you need a topography, na? Because when rain falls. You have to create a model by which the rain, when rain falls, how it is going to travel, right? So for that, you must have a topography. So topography we can have because these are very large areas. You can imagine Shimnath River watershed. Okay, Shimnath River itself it is traveling more than 200 kilometers. Okay, so it is very difficult to go to the field and get the survey data right so to remove this thing to tackle this particular problem we are now using remote sensing products okay remote sensing products like digital elevation model dem okay dem is a cartoset product and it is giving you a particular topography of that area right so with the help of that topography you can create your watershed or your point of study because you have proposed a structure at this location. So the first thing is what? How much water is going to come at this location? That you can identify, analyze very easily actually. Okay, with the help of these tools and techniques. You need what? Topography, you need rainfall. Okay, you need these characteristics. That means what type of land use is there over this watershed? Because you know, might be some villages are there, some city area is there. Okay, some uh, water bodies, many things are there within that watershed. You can imagine Shimnad River watershed, it contains three major cities, Bilaspur, Raipur, as well as Bilaipur. Those who belong to Chhattisgarh, they know, right? So this thing is there, right? So it depends upon when rainfall, it falls over a particular surface. It might be open land, it might be forest, okay? It might be buildings, many things are there. So a particular analysis is there and there are several models by which you can do rainfall runoff modeling. Okay, rainfall runoff modeling. So by this model, you can have the information about the runoff. Okay, 
how much runoff is going to happen over this particular watershed and from that runoff for example if i ask you in which unit rainfall is measured i hope you must know rainfall kis unit pe measure hota hai you can have the information in newspaper also in millimeter that means it is measured in terms of depth theek hai for example i say ki over raipur you are having 10 mm of rainfall offers what does it means <laughs> actually you are belong you belongs to it that's why i am asking this thing otherwise it is known na those who are doing in either earth sciences or other they are knowing this this thing but what does it means 10 mm of rainfall offers over raipur this information you have got in the newspaper next morning right the previous day rainfall is this much so what does it means i hope you are thinking and reading the newspaper and you must know observe the surroundings also you are you belongs to it or any other field okay related to software development but as a general people you should know these things okay can anybody so when uh, rain for others uh, when the amount of total volume of water that is being collected in the city and it is spread throughout the area of it the depth which is covered is very true yeah. 10 mm of rainfall means 10 mm is received over a particular station okay yeah. you have placed a rain gauge station okay yeah. at some location for example over raipur uh, over an it building okay yeah. this building at the top you have placed a rain gauge station in that rain gauge the amount of rainfall has been collected in a particular jar okay in a jar it is collected so it may be it, it is what 10 mm 10 mm of rain is collected in that particular jar okay so that is indicated you have read in the newspaper this information okay now that is collected in a jar and you need to convert in particular in terms of volume it is the that 10 mm is representing ki by this over entire raipur city that amount of rainfall has been offered okay so you are having that collection in that particular jar 10 mm of 10 mm volume of that rain and now you need to reflect it for entire city and you want to know how much volume has been offered okay so 10 mm multiplied by the area okay 10 mm you are considering and for entire raipur city so what could be the area of raipur city municipal or district boundary not district municipal only because rain varies okay so 10 mm multiplied by the area you will get the volume of water so if you imagine you know what is the area municipal area of raipur city कितना हो सकता है एनीवन नोस नहीं होगा चलो एक हाइपोथेटिकल ले लेते हैं टेक वन हाइपोथेटिकल वैल्यू 10000 मीटर स्क्वायर 10000 मीटर स्क्वायर मल्टीप्लाई बाय 10 एमएम हाउ मच यू आर गोइंग टू गेट यू आर गोइंग टू गेट वॉल्यूम ठीक है सो यू कैन इमेजिन दैट वॉल्यूम कैन फुलफिल हाउ मेनी ठीक है सो that volume is the potential amount of runoff okay that can be generated to store but because there are losses and many things are associated after that that is the maximum amount of runoff that can be generated but there are losses also that is going to happen right and it travel because it is going to travel after meeting the losses and then occur over this area it travels towards this location so it is going there are many losses right so there are several models it depends upon the topography the land use and many things right after this travel it reaches to this particular location and there by right, you have whatever you have created as a reservoir right to fulfill the various demands okay domestic 
इंडस्ट्रियल ठीक है और इरिगेशन मेनी थिंग्स आर एसोसिएटेड मेनली फॉर इरिगेशन पर्पज दीज थिंग दीज डेट्स आर क्रिएटेड बट नॉट एज वी आर हैविंग इंडस्ट्रियल डिमांड ऑल्सो राइट सो अकॉर्डिंगली दीज रिजर्व आर डिजाइन Now another thing is what, which you can see as channels. ठीक है? Channels may be artificial or natural. ठीक है? Natural means the rivers or streams, right? So these rivers or streams are carrying flow through it, right? So what could be the flow behavior? How the behavior changes when There is a flow in a particular stream, right? All of you have seen rivers. Flow is occurring in a particular uh, channel, but when flow increases during monsoon season, when heavy rainfall is there, heavy runoff due to that runoff that reaches there towards the streams and there are joining major rivers. You can see high level of flows are there. Okay, so what is going to happen? It overtops the bank. Okay. Over tops the bank and it can create a disaster. Okay, by creating flooding situation, right? Floods, सबको पता है, ठीक है? So to analyze this thing, how the flow behavior changes as it travels, that you can analyze analyze with the help of other models. Okay, one model is what this thing to assess the amount of water that is going to be happen. With, through rainfall right and then you are having if you got this thing here this much amount of water is available through those models you know through field investigation validation many things are there you got that thing after getting that amount of runoff you need to analyze how this flow is going to behave as it travels further okay so one thing is there one thing uh, that is upstream And downstream, upstream, downstream. Can you tell what is upstream and what is downstream in a river? If you have created a structure, suppose you have created, a, you have proposed a structure across a river. Okay, river is flowing from this direction to this direction, right? So upstream side of that structure will be this one, and downstream after that structure. Before structure and after structure. Okay, so before is what known as upstream and after is known as downstream, right? So in downstream, how the flow behavior changes? That you need to assess. Okay, from a, when it goes from upstream to downstream, that you can assess. And for that, we are going to see one model also. Okay, after this break. After this presentation, we are going to run that particular model. A simple model, not very complex. You people also can run. Right? Now we move further. So in previous, we have discussed about both the things in very short, right? Hydrologic as well as hydraulic. Hydrologic means assessment of runoff through rainfall in the entire watershed, and hydraulic means to analyze the flow behavior okay how the flow behaves as it travels that you can analyze right through hydraulic models so hydrologic model in hydrologic model you need to consider a system that system is nothing but watershed and its characteristics okay so you can see one definition hydrologic system is a structure or volume and space surrounded by boundaries boundaries i hope you know that is watershed boundaries that accept water and the other inputs operates on them internally and produce them as output it's a standard definition i hope you got the definition of hydrologic system actually input is there and one output is there and in between there is a processing okay input means your rainfall and output means your runoff to get the runoff you are having several things in between because when water falls over the surface what type of surface it is how many losses are there how it travels okay routing many things are there and you get a particular output input and output 
So uh, this is the same thing about the system. You can see input as well as the output. Okay, you know these things, right? And there is a transformation. Some models you need to apply. What equation? What models? What characteristic? Physical characteristic? Flow behavior? Many things are associated, and you will get what output. So I don't think we need to discuss this thing right now. I will discuss this because we need to run a model on hydraulics. So you can see deterministic lump steady flow model. Deterministic lump steady flow model. First thing, what is steady flow? Steady. General meaning of steady. Constant. There is no change with respect to time for a particular uh, parameter. Right. So in this, if we are talking about hydraulics, when the flow is happening, the flow in terms of discharge, not changes with respect to time when it travels from one location to other. There is no change in the amount of flow. The flow remains same as it travels. It is constant okay, with respect to time. That is nothing but steady flow. Steady flow means with respect to time, parameters not change. Hydraulic properties is not going to be changed. Right? Lumped. Actually, it is a lump is a part of deterministic models. Deterministic means which you can determine. Very simple, <laughs> which you can determine. So, if we take an equation, C is equals to A into B, A plus B, A plus B is equals to C. You know A as well as B, you can get C. So, you are having equations, okay? you are having formula. Simply, you need to observe that variable, put in that formula, and you will get the answer as C. Okay? So this is nothing but deterministic. You can determine the value, right? Now under that deterministic models are there. In that you are having lump model also. Okay, lump model. For example, the example of lump model. Now, can you tell the meaning of lump? General meaning of lump model or lump? With example, I will explain. Right. For example, you have uh, we have we, are, we have discussed about the rainfall over rapid 10 mm. But that 10 mm is collected over a particular station. Right. It is not reflecting, but we have reflected it for entire uh, rapid city. Only one single value we have taken for entire city. So one value. That is nothing but what lumped. Okay. Watershed. Single characteristic. Agar watershed let the head. Suppose this is the watershed. Right. So any characteristic. Suppose a rainfall we need to describe. Okay, for this watershed. This watershed के लिए rainfall हमें देना है, and I think, I hope कि आप लोग आगे देखोगे, there are river basins, महानदी river basin, how much average rainfall occurs over that basin? गंगा river basin, what is the average rainfall? शिवनाथ river, खारून river, what is the average rainfall? ठीक है? So for शिवनाथ river it is 200 mm, ठीक है? Here 200 mm around 1200 average annual rainfall is about 1200 mm which occurs over this water uh, shimnad river watershed okay and you can imagine how much is the area very large area 30000 square kilometer something about that is the area of shimnad river basin okay so you can see you can imagine ki how many rain gauges are established for that particular watershed it must be not one it must be several Several rain gauges because rain varies as per the area. 
ठीक है सो वी नीड टू हैव सिंगल वैल्यू एज आई एम सेइंग 1200 एमएम दैट मींस सिंगल वैल्यू इज देयर सो यू नीड टू डिटरमाइन सिंगल वैल्यू दैट सिंगल वैल्यू बिकॉज़ यू नीड टू डिटरमाइन सपोज रन ऑफ वन वैल्यू ऑफ रन ऑफ वन वैल्यू ऑफ रन रेनफॉल गेटिंग सो दैट इज नथिंग बट ए लंब मॉडल है you need to have there are number of rain gauges 70 80 rain gauges in in and around the watershed several rainfall those stations are receiving you need to convert to a single value so when you are converting to a single value that is nothing but lump okay you got a single value of rainfall apply in the model and you get one run off value so that is what your lump modeling okay so lum study flow model so study flow now you know deterministic now you know similarly we are having unstudy flow models unstudy one is study flow study model and one is unstudy model hum dekhte hain na aap logo ne padha hoga linear models yes theek hai linear means constant constant uh, current is flowing or aap log circuits padhte hoge mujhe thoda jankari nahi hai zyada uske bare mein but linear models are there right so like this you are having now unsteady flow unsteady flow simply means when any parameter changes with respect to time as it travels ठीक है ट्रेवल इसलिए बोल रहा हूं बिकॉज हाइड्रोलिक्स की बात कर रहा हूं स्लो इज ऑकरिंग राइट सो व्हेन अ पैरामीटर चेंजेस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम इट इज नथिंग बट अ अनस्टडी ठीक है सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट फ्लो हाइड्रोलिक्स अनस्टडी फ्लो राइट नो यू आर हैविंग वन न्यू टर्म दैट इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ठीक है डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड so distributed means you are determining suppose this is the hall theek okay? hai you can determine for this area how much this particular platform how much runoff is going to happen and in that how much runoff is going to happen so distributed area is same this you are determining separately this you are determining separately or that or that that is what distributed but area is same so you will get refined values in case of deterministic model but it requires large amount of data okay for deterministic model okay law modeling is somewhat easy right easy means it requires single values right but in deterministic case it requires number of values okay and other things are same okay इन <laughs> create your own programs right that you can think over so if we talk about the is sort analysis of water resources system right sort analysis you know strength weakness opportunities and threats right what could be the strength of water resources system i'm talking in terms of our country okay so you can write is sort also आप अपने बारे में भी एक शॉर्ट एनालिसिस कर सकते हो राइट वॉट इज योर स्ट्रेंथ वीकनेस राइट अपॉर्चुनिटीज क्या है और थ्रेड क्या है मुझे मुझसे ही थ्रेड क्या है ठीक है समथिंग सो वॉट टू इन वेरी जनरल सो यू कैन सी दिस थिंग दिस थिंग इज नॉन टू यू इंडिया इज गिफ्टेड विथ नंबर ऑफ रेवर्स देर इज नो इश्यू ऑफ वॉटर अवेलेबिलिटी right so you can see some amount is mentioned here 4000 into 10 to the 3 cubic meter volume is 
वाटर अवेलेबिलिटी इज देयर ठीक है वाटर अवेलेबिलिटी आइदर इन सरफेस और रॉन्ग वाटर बोथ थिंग्स आर देयर ठीक है सो दिस इज द स्ट्रेंथ वी आर नो वीकनेस you can read the weaknesses what could be the weaknesses okay some areas are receiving very high amount of rainfall some areas are receiving very low or negligible also okay so there is a huge variation of rainfall occurrence okay storage is insufficient to meet the demands and many things are there okay which can be written in this weaknesses Now the opportunities which you need to apply. Okay, what will be the opportunities? To store water, right? To operate reservoir optimally. If you talk about this second term, to operate the reservoirs optimally. How of we can optimize the operation? Think about a reservoir or a dam. Dam is created to store water and Water is released at the time of the requirement through a network of canal system, okay, to supply water to the agriculture fields as well as for domestic uh, industrial purposes at the time of requirement. Okay, so optimal. I hope optimization. You are doing optimization. What does it mean? Optimization to have the maximum benefit. and minimum losses maximize the benefits and minimize the losses is generally we can call as optimization there are several tools techniques by which you can do optimization right so you are the people who can create ports theek hai you can put sensors theek hai industrial demand and many things are there ki at this time when demand uh, is there how much water we can release and when it travels from reservoir to that location application how we can save water that also you can think theek okay. hai so there are many things many opportunities are there which you can apply nowadays it tools techniques are there information technology how we can transfer the information with the help by sitting in dry pool we can operate that reservoir these things are going on right so threats what are the threats so large spatial and temporal variation spatial means with respect to the space that means the area the location and the time temporal means time there is timely variation at this time rainfall is going heavy rainfall but at other location no rainfall like this there is a very variations in the and one very important thing demand is ever increasing day by day demand is increasing water demand is day by day increasing so to get this to analyze the demand you can do apply various tools rural demands urban demands there are various demands domestic industrial ठीक है इट इज इंक्रीजिंग इंक्रीजिंग बट द मैक्सिमम ईल व्हिच वी आर टेकिंग इज फ्रॉम ग्राउंड वाटर ग्राउंड वाटर ईल वी आर टेकिंग बट रिचार्जिंग वी आर नॉट डूइंग प्रॉपर्ली ठीक है द अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर व्हिच वी आर पंपिंग टू ग्राउंड वाटर रिसोर्सेस दैट वी आर नॉट प्रोवाइडिंग ठीक है वन इंपॉर्टेंट वन थिंग इज देयर uh you know about the precise irrigation system precise irrigation precise means very in a very optimized way you can apply water to the agriculture field so in precise irrigation there are number of methods one is drip irrigation sprinkler irrigation theek okay? hai so earlier what happened right you can you don't have these methods sprinkle drip right so what farmers are doing flooding they just spread water and that is flood theek okay? hai flooded and they are taking crops like that theek okay? hai nowadays very in a very optimized way 
the farmers are applying these techniques like drip irrigation, sprinkler irrigation, right? But every technology is having its advantages and disadvantages. We are we can talk about the number of advantages of drip as well as the sprinkler irrigation system. But what could be the disadvantages? The disadvantages can be which has not occurred in our country, but in other countries it has been occurred. Okay. Due to very precise irrigation, what has happened? Because agriculture area contributes a very large area in the country. If you talk in terms of area, and what would be the agriculture area? If suppose the Chhattisgarh is having, imagine, hypothetical 10,000 square kilometer, for example. In that 10,000, I hope is 50% must be agriculture. Okay? Imagine Karlo. Now, in that 50%, if you apply precise irrigation, okay, drop ice, okay, apply water drop ice to the crop, okay, so that is not going to recharge the groundwork. So there is a very problematic situation in US. It has been observed and reported. Due to very precise irrigation, because they are having very optimized canal system and this precisely precise irrigation system, the groundwater, because the extraction, the pump, the amount of pumping, okay, recharging has not been done. And after decades, they are seeing this thing. Okay, they are not finding water below the ground. Okay. This situation is not there in our country, but there is an alarming thing. Okay? We should think about this also. Okay? So every technology technique is having its own advantages and disadvantages. So that's why when you, you are doing research, always it is told by your supervisor, okay, what are the limitations of your uh, tools to solve a particular problem? There are a number of tools, but what could be the limitations? So you need to create it in tabular form. If these are the limitations of this tool, this tool, and I'm going to apply that particular tool. So you need to answer me why I'm going to apply that tools. Okay, those tools. So this is very uh, general thing. Okay. So ultimately, the sort for sort analysis, what you need to do? Systematic study is required. Okay. Not only by sitting in the laboratory or classroom or wherever, okay? you need to observe in the field also these type of situations. For dealing with earth sciences, you need to feel the things. Otherwise, by sitting here, you cannot imagine the, what type of situation is there. So that's why field investigation, field validation is required in any earth sciences studies. Right? Now we are actually coming to the point. <laughs> so, <clears throat> hydrologic modeling and hydraulic modeling, two things are there, right? Hydrologic modeling, as we have already discussed, that is rainfall runoff modeling, okay? There are several tools, techniques. It determines for a given storm on the landscape, a storm means your rainfall. Okay, landscape, land is used, then how much water will become runoff? That you can do with the help of rainfall runoff modeling. That is nothing but hydrologic modeling, right? Now, if you come to hydraulic modeling, now that strong runoff, where it goes, and how the flow behavior changes, that you can determine using hydraulic modeling system. This change the quantity of water and the shape of the landscape and the stream channel and determine how deep and fast water will be and what area it will cover. Area means inundation area. If flow is within the main channel, that is okay. But when flow depth rises, okay, what is going to happen at a certain level? It overtops the banks of the river or a stream. Then you can create a disaster. Okay. If the amount of water comes continuously in the river, okay, it's changing. 
So this is already we have discussed about hydrologic modeling, right? This okay. There are many things which needs to be discussed, but I think you get a glimpse of these things. Okay, what is hydrologic and what is hydrologic? Hydrologic, I hope it is clear. It is related to the amount of water that is going to be generated as runoff over a particular watershed system or a river basin, right? And you can uh, analyze this flow behavior chain using hydraulic water, right? So <clears throat> today we are going to discuss about this particular tool, HECRAS. It is a publicly available tool software, which you can download from HEC website. And uh, it's very simple. There is a simple interface, right? And this is open source, but source code is not available. They are not giving you the source code to change anything. Okay. Some software tools are giving their source code also. But this is not giving a source code. Right. But because this is publicly available and accepted worldwide, we are using this. There are many other tools also. Right. So HEC RAS. R A S. HEC stands for Hydraulic Engineering Center. And R A S stands for River analysis system. Okay. So it is developed by US Armed Corps of Engineers. Okay. US. Okay. Okay. Now <clears throat> you can see it is one dimensional mathematical simulation model that works on two basic fluid mechanics equations continuity equation and momentum equation. Okay. So at the back end of this tool, Actually, you have to apply the amount of water which you have got from your hydraulic hydrologic model. You have done, uh, you have created one hydrologic model and you have got a particular flow. Okay. That flow you need to apply to that channel. Okay. You are having that value. Now you need to apply that particular flow in that particular channel. Okay. So, how that Flow is going to change its behavior that you need to analyze. Okay, through this particular model. So <clears throat> there are there is written one dimensional model. Okay, at the back end, two equations are there. One is continuity equation. Continuity equation means you know what is continuity equation. The amount of flow does not change with respect to time, it is going to be constant. Okay. And momentum means how it is accelerating, how the flow is accelerating. Okay. Acceleration due to gravity and many things are involved in this. Okay. The amount of flow, how it is going to accelerate from one location to other. Okay. We are not going to go in very pure mathematics. Okay. So one dimensional, two dimensional is also there. And three dimensional is also there. You can go up to two dimensional analysis in this. Okay. 1D or 2D. 3D you can go, but you need to have the knowledge about many other tools also. Okay. But head class is doing work very easily for 1D as well as 2D. Okay. Now, what is 1D? What is 2D and what is 3D? You can it's You can see some images which actually I have drawn. Right. Time neither, that's why I am not able to draw with care or any other software. But we can understand. This is what it is written. You can read, I think, hydrograph. This hydrograph, hydrograph is nothing but a graph which is plotted with respect to two parameters are there, flow, discharge and time okay when their channel uh, flow is occurring in a channel okay at a particular cross section location how much volume of water crosses with respect to time okay that reading that observation is nothing but discharge volume of water with respect to time okay so you can have this information and this you will get from your hydrolo hydrologic model 
so if you plot this uh, volume of water with respect to time with time okay discharge versus time okay then that particular graph is nothing but hydrograph and this is very important component in any hydrologic or hydraulic analysis or you can say water resources analysis right so hydrograph you are having now through this hydrograph you can have information about the peak flow maximum flow is going to occur in how, how much time and what is the quantity of that so through this graph you can have the maximum qp is nothing but the peak flow peak amount of flow maximum flow because whenever we are designing any structure or anything hydraulic structure or storage we are designing for the worst condition okay worst condition means in this case it must be the peak you are not going to design for the lowest you are going to analyze for the maximum okay so for worst condition we are going to do the analysis now this peak you are having suppose uh, 10000 cubic uh, cubic meter per second or whatever some other value hypothetical value you can take now that amount of flow is to be transferred to a particular channel okay so imagine this is a channel the flow is occurring from this side to this side so above is known as upstream and when it flows downward downstream okay now you can see flow is occurring for example flow is occurring imagine from left and right banks are there flow is also incoming okay now see the cross section imagine one cross section i hope you know what is cross section cross section so much thing yes hmm? hope so <laughs> cross section along a river right so we are na ki main samjhau fir se i hope you are you are understanding a cross section is drawn Across a river, suppose ki yahan pe le liya humne kahi pe bhi any look point along this river, a cross section is there. Now you know the water is through surface runoff. Water flows toward the stream and it joins. When it joins, what is going to happen? Water level rises. You can see this direction. Water level rises with respect to time. now after some time when it continues contributing the north which is coming to that river it continues contributing what is going to happen the water moves out of the banks also so two direction phenomena is there when the flow is increases what is going to happen it may flow out one phenomena is this one incoming and one is outgoing okay one is rise in the water level so there are if you plot you are having three directions x direction y direction which contain incoming outgoing and z is nothing but the rise in the water level rise or down whatever it is okay minus z z or plus or no? then y plus y minus y okay like this for x so one dimensional here means you can take any either x y z any one okay so when we are considering one dimensional analysis it may be this much it may be this one or it may be this much one dimensional that doesn't means it must be x only okay it may be y or z also okay so 1d 2d 3d if you are considering all that means three dimension if you are considering two Two dimensions. So one means one dimension. So it depends if we are doing analysis for one dimension. That means we are ignoring other hydraulic characteristics. Some characteristics which we are going to ignore. But in one dimensional, you are considering flow may be the major one, or this rise in the water level may be the major one. Okay. So any which is going to dominate okay which is going to dominate the flow is going to dominate actually okay the flow all, always going to be dominate because flow ka hi to analysis kar raha right so any this 
particular z can be taken as one dimensional or this one or this so we are going to see actually one dimension where the depth changes with respect to time okay and we are going to apply steady flow analysis steady means same amount of flow is there for one location and same amount you are going to apply. in between how the flow behavior changes that we need to analyze So these are some of the governing equations which are running at the back end. Okay, as I have told you, break uh, So as I have told you, there are two equations which are running at the back end. Okay, one is continuity equation and other one is momentum equation. So when you combine these two equations, you are having an equation which is known as Saint Bennett's equation. Okay, the solution of that equation you are going to get in the results. Okay, whatever result you are going to have when you are running the model, these are running the solution of these equations which you have got actually. So actually, this one. Okay, one channel is there. You are having suppose two cross section. This is L section actually. Okay, when the river is flowing from one location to other, like this, profile view is there, L section, longitudinal section. So first section and second section. So actually, what happens? There is a loss. Okay, loss of energy when it travels from one section to other, from section one to section two. Energy loss. For example, energy loss. I will correlate with some example. Why we are having overhead tanks? Water is stored overhead over the building. Why? Simple. If you put that tank at the surface bottom, can you get water? You are uh, residing in second floor or third floor or your. Uh, Lab is on second floor and you are having a storage at the ground. Okay. Can you get by default? No. For that, you need to actually pump. You need to apply some energy. Okay. Electric energy or whatever. By running a pump, you need to lift the water to that particular flow. Okay. But if you are having the water tank above, okay, you can very easily get the water from top to top. So it is having a particular head okay, for supplying water, water distribution. In the city also, you can see overhead tanks in many places. Those are supplying water, right? So those at that particular height, the water has created a head actually, right? Pressure head. By that pressure head, it can apply water to the household. You can see a lot of pressure when you are opening a tap, right? A lot of pressure is there. It is due to that head because water is stored above again, many meters above from the ground surface. So it has created a very only it is required to store water to that particular tank. And by default, by gravity, it can apply water, you can have the water through pressure, head, right? So that pressure head. Right? In this particular, you can see this is the surface of a particular channel, right? River profile. You are having water surface elevation. Water surface. What is the water level at this section and this section? Now, at that particular section, you are having a particular head, right? Energy. In terms of energy, at section one, you are having. This much energy, okay. At section two, you are having this much energy, okay. So from the data for the analysis purpose, we are taking the energy from this particular data. So this plus this plus this, okay. This data and then this water depth, okay, and velocity head because water is traveling now from one location to other, right? So high energy is at up in this section one. So when it travels towards section two, 
you can see there is a loss of head. You can have the high velocity head at section one, but when it goes to section two, some amount has been decreased. That means loss of head. It may be due to various reasons. Due to major is what the roughness of the channel. Okay. If we apply, imagine a artificial channel. Okay. Apply water, it can slide. Okay. But in case of natural channel, there are losses. Roughness. Roughness is more. Roughness is less. Okay. So it depends upon that also. Okay. Roughness. So roughness is one of the very important uh, coefficient actually it is so which is reducing the head activity right when uh, water is flowing through, through a particular pipe system at a at a particular location is starting the head is very high but when it travels travels through a media media is there right? so due to that media friction loss and many losses are there it might be bend okay uh, many things are there right so due to these, these contributes to the losses, the head loss, right? So you can get uh, these losses. You can have the solution. You can have this from these equations which are running at the back end, the, these losses. And in Hecras, at the back end, these equations are solved as you give the inputs to the system, right? Okay. Now in Hecras, the first and the most important thing is what geometry. Geometry to sabne padha hai, I hope. Geometry, right? So you need to apply the geometry. Flow is available to you because you have done some analysis through HEC HMS or any hydrologic model. You are having that particular flow that needs to be carried in that particular channel. So you need to define the channel, channel geometry. Okay. What is the shape, size, length? Okay. Many things are associated with that geometry. Okay. So you need to define, suppose we are working for a particular river system, you need to define the center line of the river. Actually, we have, have came to the most important part of our this today's because on the basis of this, you are going to run your model. Okay. So center line of the river. First thing, center line is drawn from upstream to downstream. Okay, from upstream to downstream. First important thing. So, suppose for example, this is the river. River direction is from from this to this. So, we take this as upstream location, and this is downstream location. In this, you are visualizing one portion of a river. Imagine Shimna Kharun River, which is nearby, running along Rampur city. So it travels from Dhamtari district and it goes and meets uh, in uh, Shimna somewhere Kapar meet karta. Chalo. Jahapar we meet karta. Right. Um, I guess. It is meeting at particular major river somewhere. Our study area, we have chosen our study area as Raipur. Okay. So we are going to see the, analyze the impact of this Kharun river over Raipur city. Okay. So we are going to choose one stretch of that particular river, not the entire length of Kharun river. So that stretch in technical words, in terms of uh, software, it is known as reach. Okay. For example, Ganga river or any other major river, you are going to analyze for, you are not going to analyze for whole, whole length. For some stretch, you are going to do some analysis. So that stretch is nothing but known as reach of that major river. Okay. This is Ganga ki baat kare. Pryagraj ho gaya, Banaras ho gaya, many cities are there. Okay. So if you are going to do some analysis for that 
so you need to identify the two location in between your that city entire city is going to be impacted okay so that you need to identify so that is known as reach so we have taken this particular reach of a particular river so this uh, direction of flow is from top to bottom so this become up stream side and this become down stream side so this is how you can determine uh, the first thing to define the center line of the river okay river or a artificial channel anything next thing is what river is stationing I hope you are a M.Tech, B.Tech student, M.Tech. First year, you have to learn the basic survey. At your time, civil is there, basic civil is there. I hope everyone has studied basic civil. In that, you have done chain survey. In that, you have seen the station, changes. Okay, changes, take it, I'm changed it. As per the length, first reading we are taking at zero change, then next, then next, then 30 meter like that. Changes are there. Okay. So in this river stationing, you need to identify, give the station numbers. For example, the length of this river, this reach is two kilometers. For example, so you can see on the screen also, two kilometers is the length of this river reach right so first station we give at the most downstream location the most downstream location is this location the first change we give at this and the most upstream location we give as the last change so here it becomes station number 2000 meters in the uh, si unit system you can give like this okay? and in between you, you can give several station on which you have to determine you need to give the cross sections okay so length stationing and then later on cross sections right so you can see uh, river stationing is identifying location along the channel so only thing in this is what you need to start your station from the most downstream side okay our upstream is this one, downstream is this one, but we give a station change from the most downstream. You can see from it. Okay. So after this, you need to give the river cross section values. That either you need to survey or you can apply any advanced modeling system, okay. remote sensing product. By that, you can have the cross section values. Okay. Cross section values means the location and what is the levels okay you can see here the cross section for example but in this you need to move you need to see one what is there you need to start your drawing your cross section from this end to this end okay from this end to this end suppose uh, i am standing here this is the upstream location and i am looking down the stream river flows in this direction so which is my left as per the screen this is my left and this is right okay so this side is known as left over bank and this side is known as right over bank okay and rov length right over bank and left over bank okay as per this you need to look down the stream always okay <laughs> So river cross section you need to do in this direction. You can see the arrow. Okay? Because why I'm telling this thing, you need to apply this particular rules to your model. When you are going to run that model, you need to apply these rules. Okay. So cross sectioning is done from this to this. Okay. So if we draw a cross section like this, okay. So A location, I have not written A. A will come at this or this. A to B, I'm drawing A to B. Okay, from A to B, where you are going to get this A at this location or at this location? We have started drawing cross section over this plan from like this A to B. Now I have drawn a cross section. 
a to b so a will be here and b will be okay might be confusing but it is very clear okay now you can see there are two things one is length of that reach okay length of the reach in between two cross section you have drawn cross section so you are having length of the reach okay lc then you are having le length of right over bank as well as left over bank now one important thing is that you need to define the bank locations which is encircled here somewhere these are the location of the bank up to this location water travels normally in the channel for a river after this location it over top it comes in the flood plain okay after this location this location is nothing but the flood plains okay left over bank and right over bank so you need to identify these two locations okay because water travels easily and smoothly within that channel so that is known as main channel and after that you are having this particular flood plains okay so this you need to identify okay either from survey or some remote sensing product you are having the cross section data set then identifying the bank location so maine to kaha diya i have told you how to identify the bank location either from field survey or from your imagery remote sensing products then you are having length of right over bank as well as the length of or uh, left over bank with mannings in that so lob lrob l lob we have discussed theek okay? hai what is mannings n mannings n is nothing but the roughness coefficient theek okay? hai roughness coefficient as the water travels from one section to other theek okay? hai what is going to happen there is a material of the river bed over which water is traveling theek okay? hai so for that you are having one coefficient that is known as roughness coefficient okay and it is basically mannings n value it depends upon the type of the surface okay so you are having flood plain banks okay flood plain so can you tell ki mannings coefficient could be higher or lower for main channel or the flood plain channel where you are having a more value of a higher value of mannings set in the main channel or the banks banks means they go main channel is this one it contains only the bed material okay imagine a river system it contains only the bed river jo bhi material hoga rocks hoge jo bhi hai alluvial soil whatever it is okay but this plain is containing vegetation trees maybe agriculture field okay so when you are having these obstruct these are basically obstruction to the flow ye kya obstruction hai na yahan pe to nahi in this particular region there is no obstruction smoothly it is carrying the flow but when it the water will flow in, in these location it carries obstruction trees vegetation theek hai built up areas many things are there theek hai so higher values are there for this flood plain for this this condition and lower values for this main channel theek okay? hai that you need to understand actually you don't know about the fluid mechanics but this is like this so higher value for flood plain and lower values for this roughness condition in the main channel theek okay? hai so hum yahan pe stop karte hain i think we break and ki aage shall break to theek hai after that we do the practicals theek hai to aap sab the links share kar dijiyega to download kar sakte hain